Uh, welcome to a new video and in this video I want to do a comparison between an entry-level iPhone SE 2020 against the mid-ranger from Sony the Xperia 10 Mark III. Red versus pink. Uh, who is the better one when it comes to cameras? Uh, so let's get started. <laughs> First, let's take a look at the specs of the cameras of those two devices. Both feature a main sensor of 12 megapixel with an aperture of f1.8. But this is the only one on the Apple iPhone SE 2nd edition or the iPhone SE 2020. The Xperia still has two other 8 megapixel shooters, a telephoto one and an ultra wide angle as well. And we have also a small difference, 7 megapixel on the front of the iPhone and 8 megapixel in front of the Sony. So here are the specs and uh, let's start with some videos. So I'm recording 1080p 60 frames per second with the Xperia 10 Mark III and hopefully also everything in focus nice and sharp with this device. It can record up to 4K 30. This is 1080p 60 frames per second. Sadly it cannot do 4K 60 what the iPhone SE can do. So what do you think about the quality here using the internal mics? Because the Xperia does not have the possibility to use an external mic with the internal software which is a bit of a bummer I would say because it has a headphone jack especially useful for this. What do you think about the quality of the Xperia 10 Mark III? So uh, now recording with the iPhone SE 2nd edition or 2020 also 1080p 60 frames per second it also has very good stabilization I would say and good HDR though it does only feature one cam on the back what do you think about this 12 megapixel shooter here in full HD 60 frames per second how is stabilization how are colors and uh, yeah is it better uh, in terms of stabilization than the Sony one of the cool features of the Xperia 10 Mark III is that it also features an ultra wide angle that gives you a lot more reach though this ultra wide angle only works in 1080p 30 frames per second and not 4k or 60 frames per second 1080p what do you think about the stabilization of this ultra wide angle it sadly has no autofocus or no macro mode capabilities here but the main sensor itself and you will see it in the photos as well has good macro capability already you can get pretty close to object it's not a true macro but you can get so close that you really don't miss a macro cam here and get the better picture with the main sensor what do you think about this ultra wide angle and the flexibility to use this for example for vlogging this is now a recording with the iPhone SE, second edition, 4K, 30 frames per second, the maximum resolution. I was wrong earlier, it does not support 4K, 60 frames per second, just 4K, 30 frames per second, which is a bit weird because I read in some specs that it can support 4K, 60. Maybe the specs were wrong. Uh, anyway, this is 4K, 30 frames per second on the iPhone SE, second edition. So this is now the Xperia 10 Mark III and Cinema Edition, very wide. 21 by 9 4k 30 because it also can do 4k 30 what do you think about this quality stabilization and so on of the main cam what I noticed I have to stretch my arm fairly far out to be uh, still like nice in focus otherwise it's a bit too close because it crops significantly to get good stabilization in 4k which is a bit of a bummer I would say but anyway what do you think about this quality and the flexibility of the 10 mark 3 the Xperia 10 Mark III also in 4K30 allows to switch to the zoom lens that it has which yeah, gives you this kind of quality and you can crop in further if you want to to see some more details here up to 10 times zoom and it's fairly stable I would say as well in 4K which is very interesting. The iPhone doesn't have a dedicated zoom lens, but you can zoom in. This is the maximum that you can get here in 4K 30. What do you think? I think the Xperia has an edge over the iPhone in terms of zoom capabilities when recording video. Front-facing video on the Xperia 10 Mark III works fine at 1080p 30 frames per second. And I think also the stabilization is good as long as you have enough light. 
And if I go walk here through this, hopefully it's still keeping the frame rate, at least on the screen it looks good, and it's working fine as well, but if you go to darker situations, if you go to a dark room, for example, it not only becomes very noisy, but also stuttery, because the frame rate is dropping dramatically, like here right now, if I do like this, it looks fine on the viewfinder, but in the video it will be so, so bad. So it's almost unusable on the Xperia, so Sony really has to upgrade its game on the mid-range as well. The 10 Mark III's front-facing camera, sadly a no-go. The iPhone also only can do 1080p 30 frames per second and in the dark I think it's still noisy but a bit brighter and it doesn't have this like stuttery effect that the Xperia 10 Mark III suffers of. And if I go to the light now, you will also see that yeah, it becomes much, much better. I think it's also only 8 megapixel, but yeah, it is much, much better when it comes to the front-facing video. If you want to do vlogs with the front-facing video, especially also in darker situations, you can do this with the iPhone much, much better. Let's take a look at the photos. The iPhone SE 2020 always on the left and the Xperia 10 Mark III always on the right. And I have to say, it's very hard to find a clear winner here because basically the iPhone SE 2020 and the Xperia 10 Mark III offer you the same great photo capabilities for a mid-range device. So that means the only thing that you can see in subtle differences are in processing the image, colors, white balance, sharpening. And here the iPhone you can clearly see has a little bit of a brighter image and a more towards warm color image, where the Xperia 10 Mark III has a bit of cooled down image, but also more true to life. When we zoom in and take a look at details, we can see both those 12 megapixel sensors offer you yeah, exactly the same in terms of sharpness, in terms of bokeh. There's maybe a little bit less busy bokeh on the Xperia 10 Mark III than on the iPhone SE. And I think the iPhone is a bit more closed up, but this could be due to me taking the photo a little bit further away. I would even go so far and tell you these are exactly the same sensors in the iPhone and in the Xperia device. The processing is very important. Here you can see HDR, so the photo where the sun was somewhere here. And you can see both do a good job, but we clearly see that the iPhone is raising the shadows in the foreground much, much more than the Xperia 10 Mark III. We can still see the difference in processing, much more warmer colors here. I can tell you this is not the color that I saw. It's more towards what the Xperia 10 Mark III was um, showing me. What we can see also is that the shadow areas, like the tree here, is much, much darker and pronounced than on the Xperia 10 Mark III, where, we, where I can still see some of the details of the tree, which is pretty interesting, because I would have so said, yeah, usually the iPhone has a bit, a bit better HDR, but here it is crushing the blacks and making it black like silhouette-like. And this has something to do with the Xperia not having this contrast boosting that the iPhone SE uh, tends to do uh, to its photos. Then the next photo is a comparison where we can see that the Xperia 10 Mark III now with a super wide angle or ultra wide angle has the ability to just capture a little bit more of the scene. When it comes to details, it's not much like of a comparison if I compare the ultra wide angle with the um, normal uh, camera of the SE. So the SE clearly wins in terms of sharpness, but it's still good what you can get with the 10 Mark III for a, for a mid-range device. I would say, yeah, this is better definitely than the average 8 megapixel um, uh, shooters, especially in terms of colors, and uh, not maybe so much in terms of sharpness, but colors, distortion, and so on. It is good. I would even say it is better than on the Honor 50 or the Nova 9 that has a super weak ultra wide angle, especially the Nova 9. So this is this. Now compared with the main lens on the Xperia 10 Mark III, we can see again warmer on the iPhone SE. You can see it here in the sky which has like the warmer blue and a much cooler blue on this uh, 10 Mark III. The 10 Mark III is more true to life. You can also see this here in the tree. Yes, it is exactly like this, how I saw it with my eyes because the sun was shining from this side and shining onto the tree and here the iPhone just has like done a lot of processing, a lot of sharpening going on 
and yeah also tweaking the colors making it a bit warmer as well you can see it also on the on the car here clearly that the xperia has a more natural color to the car it's not editing so much it's not sharpening so much and you can see it also uh, on the car tires here that the iphone se is crushing the blacks a little bit making everything a little bit darker adding more contrast to it and also sharpening at the same time this helps in perceiving a little bit more sharper image if you really pixel peep here and zoom even further in um, then you might see okay the iphone se looks a bit sharper but i think the xperia 10 mark 3 has the more natural look the typical sony look um, that we can see here where you can see the colors more clearly and you can see more a little bit more details because it's not crushing so much in the blacks not much uh, adding of contrast here in terms of sharpness and details besides the um, iphone uh, crushing the blacks a little bit you don't see much of a difference they are basically on par when it comes to this here again hdr shot we can see the xperia is not raising the shadows so much in the foreground we can see clearly again that the iphone se is warming up stuff when we go and take a look at the details here yeah almost exactly the same there is a bit of sharpening going on again on the iphone to make everything look a little bit sharper when we take a look at the bricks here on the side especially the edges i think the iphone also has like slightly the edge here where here it's getting a bit unsharp uh, but still both perform on the same level where i would say it's the same sensor and just the processing is different on those um, resolution wise um, i here if you take a look at the sign in the background i don't prefer the prefer the iphone here so much because it is you can clearly see it is over sharpening and doesn't look so natural to me so i like the xperia shot a bit more but you decide for yourself which one did better in terms of hdr i think the sky and exposure is almost the same maybe the xperia 10 mark 3 could yeah it could help to raise the shadows in the foreground a little bit tiny bit and you would have the same result on the as on the se uh, for this matter then ultra wide against the normal one to see if we can see a difference here you can clearly see the the, the difference of um, i was zooming out with the iphone of uh, se i had to step back with it to get the same kind of shot as with the xperia 10 mark 3 but you can see the dramatic difference the the, the stairs and the walkway looks much much longer on the xperia 10 mark 3 thanks to the more like fish eye or more ultra wide angle that uh, you can have with the xperia 10 mark 3 which helps exagger exaggerating certain photos exaggerating buildings that you do or helps in creativity and creating some very interesting photos as well hdr is both good I think you can see here the sun a little bit where here i think also on the iphone we can see here this line of uh plane that you cannot see here on the 10 mark we could be that the plane was not going there at this time but i think slightly worse hdr but you have to keep in mind this is on the ultra wide angle on the xperia 10 mark 3 and for this i think it did a fantastic job and again details here it's getting a bit crushed on the iphone because it's getting a bit darker and here you can see a little bit more details on the 10 mark 3 and this is the ultra wide angle comparing with the normal one i also did a normal shot here and you can see oh now it looks on par with the iphone se again a bit cooled down colors but uh, hdr typical not much of a difference you can see clearly it looks appears to be sharp on the iphone se here also the sign but it's just sharpening going on and here you can see that there are stones that are piled up here and here you really have to really look at this because you don't see much of the detail because it's like crushing the blacks is adding more contrast to it so in general i think both do a good job the next thing here hdr again a bit cooled down a bit darker exposure on the 10 mark 3 that's basically it i don't even have to zoom in in terms of sharpness you can see it is basically the same it's just like this is warmer this is colder uh, 10 mark 3 more true to life the iphone se making everything a little bit warmer for some reason then zoom shot difference also very interesting ship on orion here uh, on the river where i have the possibility on the iphone se i don't see much 
well, cannot read what the ship's name is on the 10 mark 3 i just can zoom in with the two times uh, telezoom i can uh, read it's teodella uh teodella uh this, this ship here and yeah you can see that i can also zoom in two times with the iphone se this is digital zoom and if i go in there i still cannot read it because it looks a little bit like an abstract painting so there is a clear difference here between this and this digital against uh, optical zoom the 10 mark 3 definitely the wins in the zoom department as well and uh, yeah here also zoom camera and this is without the zoom and you can clearly see okay it is good but here it is a bit unsharp because i was zooming in a bit too much but this is uh, three times zoom so I was not only two times zooming in but got a little bit closer to this and with the optical zoom of course it degrades a little bit but it's still better readable and yeah clearer than uh, what the iPhone SE can do and uh, yeah this is this shot here again a two times shot uh, very very clear very good when the uh, as the ship came closer it was possible and here now the normal white uh, shot this is how it looks like yeah with the 10 mark 3 then the next shot here again the same story in terms of sharpness in terms of details it is basically the same sensor just a warmer color on the se colder on the 10 mark 3 uh, detail level on par not much of a difference here trees it is the same it's just it's it is the same and it's the same and it is the same i could just swap the images and you wouldn't notice the difference sometimes the iphone se has grasped the focus much quicker the 10 mark 3 has this like when you press the shutter button it is focusing again and then taking the shot this can take a second or so so it is like um, you have to be not so impatient it's just not a snapshot it is sometimes takes a while and here you can see a bit more of details here on the se but this has something to do i think because it was focusing here on the 10 mark 3 on this flower in the background which is unsharp here um yeah and it adds of course a little bit of more um contrast on the se but in general the colors almost the same uh, you can see the contrast boosted a little bit on the se which perceives as sr it's more sharp but no, if you pixel peep, you see clearly that it's the same. Here I was uh, experimenting a little bit. I was turning, I had to turn the, down the exposure a little bit on the 10 Mark III. Uh, it helps if you underexpose one step, then it chooses a, a lower ISO value and then you don't, don't have so much uh, noise in the picture. And here you can see it's uh, super sharp, super crisp and basically the same as on the SE. The SE, a little bit warmer color, a little bit more yellowish here, here a bit more orangish, this color, but it's just a matter of processing. I think I like both, and I can raise, of course, the, 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 the brightness a little bit on the 10 Mark III because I underexposed maybe a little bit too much, but it's looking fantastic. And here the same thing, a little more warmer, a little bit brighter here on this shot. HDR shot a little bit cooler cooled down here the grass but in terms of detail level there's not much of a difference I would even say in this photo here in particular to take a look at the lines of this um, cover here on the window I think the Xperia has a little bit more of those lines and here's like the upper line hardly to see but it is so much identical in this case there's no much difference it all turns around when you go to night mode because in night mode apple clearly has the better processing here even if i take a night mode shot with xperia 10 mark 3 it is trying to compensate the low noise and the high noise floor and the low light by adding aggressive noise reduction as you can see it becomes a blurry mess the iphone se doesn't do this <laughs> so much it also does noise reduction this is why some things are blurry but it has like keeps some noise in there and doesn't have this magenta kind of or bluish kind of tint where the foreground okay it's black and here it tries to do something has some color noise going on which it cannot filter out so um, again a bit of warmer color here on the iphone se uh, but in nighttime and dark ultra dark conditions forget them both the iphone se doesn't have a dedicated night mode so you cannot test it and the xperia 10 free even with dedicated night mode you can see that there is something here but um, cannot identify it and here on the iphone se it's almost complete black 
And the next shot you can see what I was photographing. If you add a little bit more light, so I turned on a light bulb, um, you get, of course, both, again, same kind of quality. There's a bit of more noise reduction going on in the 10 Mark III, a little bit less noise reduction. So you can see some noise points here, but it's overall sharper on the iPhone SE. So in nighttime, if you add a little bit of light, the SE has a bit more noise, a bit sharper. The 10 Mark III, less noise, a little bit unsharper. And of course, the white balance difference that we had before. But basically, this is everything. Here you can see it also very, very clear that the 10 Mark III struggles in low light. The algorithms are still um, not as good as uh, on Apple without even the night mode on. Yeah, and there was a shot with manual mode. You can uh, go in the 10 Mark III's manual mode. You can try to do a little bit this is the best shot that i could get but you can see it has a magenta um, tone to it still where the iphone se goes more to the greenish kind of look because it has a warmer look in general uh, you can get it a bit sharper here as you can see but it has aggressive noise uh, reduction still going on the Nintendo mark 3 uh, which uh, and yeah also worse noise reduction um, apparently than the iphone se so in dark conditions the iphone se clearly is the winner but in light in daylight conditions you don't see much of a difference between the main sensors and i would even argue because the xperia 10 mark 3 has the zoom capability which is in light conditions pretty good and awesome and beats the iphone's digital zoom and it has the ultra wide angle that adds more of an option for you to for photography for photography, the 10 Mark III beats the iPhone SE in terms of photos here, um, definitely because of more flexibility that you have with the free lenses and uh, that give you, at least in daylight, good shots. In nighttime, I wouldn't even bother to try out the ultra wide angle because it's like completely darkness. And uh, yeah, ultra, ultra night uh, time situation, the iPhone SE is the winner in terms of processing but as soon as you have a little bit of light like light from from a lamp at home you can get similar shots and similar results where the xperia definitely has more realistic colors and the iphone se more warmer colors so this is basically my conclusion the xperia 10 mark 3 has better flexibility in terms of photo quality daytime it's on par with the iphone se 2020 and overall winner is the 10 Mark III because of the flexibility with the lenses. And it's the only reason basically why I would choose the 10 Mark III when it comes to like taking the photo itself, the SE takes them way quicker than the 10 Mark III that needs a little bit of like how focus hunting and then <laughs> taking the shot, uh, which uh, can be a bit annoying if you just press the shutter and just go away, you can have a blurry picture. So you have to press the shutter, count one, two, and then it takes the photo and then you can uh, stop it. Yeah, so that's everything in terms of photos. So which of those two phones is the clear winner? I think in terms of photography and videography, the iPhone seems to be better, but you get more flexible with the Xperia 10 Mark III and its possibility to use the zoom lens and the ultra wide angle especially the ultra wide angle is a lot of fun for architectural types of photography but also for videography for vlogs i think it makes a lot of sense because you don't have to hold your phone so far away from yourself that it's yeah getting a little bit of hard to hold it so yeah which one is the clear winner for you write it down in the comment section that's everything for this video hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching until the next time bye